In example two, we saw that the math gets very tricky very quickly with any sort of a quadratic distribution having cues that blow up out of control. So to investigate some of these more complicated shapes, we have to make certain assumptions. If we assume that the thickness t is small, that allows us to eliminate higher order terms based on the thickness of our shape. It won't give you an exact answer, but it will let us draw some conclusions about the locations of the shear center based on the overall geometry of a shape and let us do it without computer tools. So in this case, we're taking basically that same shape from example one again. We know, of course, that our shear center will be located on the x-axis. We have v occurring out here at some eccentricity. So again, some moments about a down here. We're going to start just the same, point a. We're choosing point a so we don't have to worry about the vertical component here. We don't have to worry about the shear in the bottom. We know the shear in the bottom has to equal the shear in the top. And we know that overall those have to go in those directions to counter each other out. So this gives us sum of our moments about point A equal to zero implies that V applied or VY times E is equal to V top times, we're looking at a shape that is 2H tall, H wide, and a constant thickness T. So times 2H. Giving us that E is equal to 2H times V top over V applied. V top is, as always, the integral over the area tau of S dA, where S is coming from this corner here, gives us Q of S is equal to our small thickness t there. We've got s times t times h minus t over 2. Now we get to start to take advantage of our higher order terms elimination here. I'm going to divide everything through by h and pull that h out. So q of s is equal to h times s times t, 1 minus t over h, and we'll pull that 1 half off to the side as well. We're going to make this painfully obvious. We set up here, we're assuming t is small such that t over h is much less than 1. If t over h is much less than 1, then half of t over h is definitely much less than 1. We are going to assume that that goes to zero, making us have Q of S is just equal to H times S times T. Now, our tau of S is equal to V applied times Q of S over I times T. We need an i. i is equal to, we're going to add up all of our shapes here. So we've got base is t, height is 2h cubed divided by 12, I should get on screen, plus 2. We've got a top and a bottom flange. h times t cubed over 12, plus, then we've got a distance term on here, so h times t times h 
minus t over 2 squared. Simplifying i equals 8 th cubed over 12 plus 2 times h t cubed over 12 plus h t get ourselves h squared minus 2 of that so h t plus t squared over 4 We will divide all of this by h to pull it out. We'll reduce this. i is equal to 2t h cubed over 3 plus 2t cubed over 12. So again, we're dividing all of this by, let's divide by h squared here. So we'll have h cubed times t. We've got 1, we've got t over h, we've got t squared over h squared, it's 1 over 4. t squared over h squared is the same as t over h squared. That's much less than 1. That's much less than 1. And t cubed is very small, so we're going to zero that out as well. This gives us i equals 2th cubed over 3 plus 2 times h cubed t. i x x should have had that going the whole time to keep us straight. Is approximately equal we've got 2h cubed t we've got 2 thirds h cubed t this is 6, 7, 8 8 th cubed over 3 now that we've got that we can plug everything on through we're not going to sub this in quite yet we are going to say that v top screen is equal to integral over the area of v applied times h s t divided by i times t da t's cancel out and everything else here is a constant over the area. That gives us v top equal to vy applied times h divided by i. The thickness of the flange is constant, so we can pull t straight on through integral from 0 to h of s ds. v top is equal to, we'll substitute in our i this time as well, so vy applied times h times 3 divided by 8t h cubed times t, times s squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to h. t's cancel. h cubed becomes h squared. We've got an h squared up there. v top is equal to vy applied times 3 over 8h squared, so h squared over 2.
Moving to our next page. B top is equal to 3 over 16 by applied. And if we pull our sum our sum of moments about a equation on down, sum of moments about a equals zero gave us that e is equal to two h v top over vy applied. E is equal to 2h times 1 over vy applied 3 sixteenths vy applied. Our vy applied cancel we are left with E equals 3H over 8. So again, if we've got our thin shape here, T is constant and small. We've got H two H. Then V applied comes out here V Y comes at an eccentricity. 3h over 8. Using that thin wall approximation, we could go on to solve many of the more complicated shapes. But again, this does not tell us exactly what we're looking at. If we pull from our first solution here, This is not exactly the same situation because this is, if h is 5, then this flange is not 5. But anything with a thickness, this shear center approximation will not be exactly accurate. It will give you an idea of where it falls, but it will not tell you exactly. So programs like Risa Section... Or, da, what is it? I E S, I I S, Shape Builder. They're the makers of visual analysis. Hope this was instructive for you. If it was, please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment below if there's anything that you would like to see worked on in the near future. And if you are studying up for the FE exam, PE exam, SE exam, I will leave a link below to a 15% off coupon. Thank you very much.